Drs. Bill and Ginger Burkha. They are the founders and directors of the California Center for Healing Incorporated in Pasadena, California. They are licensed clinical psychologists, certified sex addiction therapists, and certified sex therapists. They are also the co-authors of The Couple's Guide to Intimacy and are soon to release From the Living Room to the Bedroom, which focuses on what they call sexual abundance. Dr. and Dr. Burkha, thank you so much for joining me. Oh, thank you for having us today, Daniela. Yes, thank you. My pleasure. My pleasure. We're going to start right off with one of your our listeners' questions, which is tell us about the Living Room to the Bedroom book that's coming out. Who is it for and what's in it for readers? Sure. Well, first of all, it's designed for couples that are really serious about reevaluating how they're in relationship with each other. So it doesn't mean that they're necessarily in a crisis, but it does mean that they're ready to take some action together. And really, it's all about creating what we call a good flow in your relationship. And when you prioritize your relationship, you're in action. So you're doing things to really actively nurture your intimacy, both emotionally and sexually. In, in addition to that, Daniela, I'd say when you're consistently blending emotional connection with erotic, pleasurable experiences, the living room and the bedroom are naturally going to feed off of each other with a very positive energy. And that's what creates that deepening foundation of secure, renewable, limitless intimacy. And then you get to what we call sexual abundance, which is the natural outgrowth of this really energized circulation between the living room and bedroom. How did you guys come up with this idea for a sexual abundance? Well, our, our history is we spent most of our careers working with couples recovering from sexual addiction. So we really spent a lot of time in the trenches with couples dealing with the most severe forms of intimacy disorders, the most severely damaged relationships. Um, those hit by infidelity um, and various forms of sexual acting out. So not just one-time situations here. We're talking about active sex addiction. So we developed a treatment modality to help couples like this who are really in their darkest hours, and the model leads them towards the light. And the light that we're referring to is intimacy and abundance, and it's the polar opposite, of course, of addiction and codependence. And what we found, Daniela, is that really it's, this is the same light that all couples really want to be basking in and that so many non-addictive relationships also find so elusive. So we found that sexual abundance therapy really works for all relationships because while the starting line may be very different for each couple, everyone is really trying to reach the same finish line and that finish line is one that has deep, intimate connections, as well as what we call abundant sexuality. How does sexual abundance affect people's lives outside of the bedroom? Yeah, well, this is where we look at it as a circulation model, um, because, you know, the idea that you can have, um, uh, you know, a, a good sex life without uh, a strong emotional connection, that's what one-night stands are made of. Um, that's what, you know, summer flings are made of. Um, you know, we're, we're talking to an audience of people who aren't really interested in that. Um, now they're in a long-term committed relationship, and they understand that, um, you know, they, they want the complete package now and to really be hitting on all cylinders in all aspects of themselves and of their relationship. So, you know, when, uh, you know, to, to apply it practically, um, when things are working well in the bedroom, usually that's going to have a warm carryover into the living room. Um, and, uh, you know, when you're closely connected in the living room, which, you know, is the metaphor we use for emotional intimacy, um, that is naturally going to lead toward desire for physical and sexual connection in the bedroom. So there's a necessary feedback loop that's involved and, uh, you know, what our model is designed to do is to help couples strengthen both rooms, really nurture both rooms simultaneously um, and consistently so they're able to get the full benefit from, both, from, both, from the energy that's there for both rooms. 
Now, how, how do people start to, because a lot of relationships, according to your book, a lot of relationships will start out very connected and very sexually vibrant. And over time, they will sort of lose that. They'll lose that connection. Why does that happen? Well, you know, we think, Daniela, that there is probably a lot of different reasons that happens. But one of the most important factors is really intentionality. And what happens in the very beginning of relationships is that there is a lot of focus and there's a lot of intention um, and energy geared towards that relationship. So you're really thinking about different ways of connecting in the beginning and spending time together and having great conversations and, you know, having more time together to have great, uh, great sexual times as well. And what ends up happening over time, if you're in a long-term relationship and then, you know, you get busy with your work and then you have children and you have other outside activities, you know, all of these things necessarily, um, if you're not very intentional, take your focus away from your primary relationship. And so that's how things, you know, if we're not very aware of it and um, consciously choosing otherwise, these are the things that can really take us away from our, that strong emotional and sexual connection. So can you tell us something about the, the six steps that are mentioned in the title? Sure. Yeah, well, first of all, um, you know, we, we think it's important uh, to have a model that people can actually use. Um, one, you know, one of the things that, that we've noticed, uh, you know, there's a lot of good information out there. Thankfully, we live in an age where, um, you know, there's not a shortage, really, of, of, of good information on healthy relationships and healthy sexuality. Many times there's a little bit of a disconnect from, you know, the theoretical uh, models or, or, or just good old-fashioned good information and, and some usability, you know, bringing it down to a practical level. So that's why um, we did try and, and make this a stepwise progression, easy-to-follow model. The first thing we do, the first step, we say, is to get on the same page and the way you do that is by asking the right questions. You have to know what questions to ask. So the idea here is a common pitfall that couples many times run into. They want to improve their sexual and emotional intimacy, but they go straight for a technique. And that's where, you know, you open up a magazine, you go to Cosmo or, you know, any of the, of the magazines out there or, or even books or, or talk shows. Um, you know, you get these tips. Um, and it's very understandable and tempting to want to plug them in, but it skips over the basic foundation building that really enables positive changes to gain traction and to endure. So the reason this step is in here is we don't want to let that happen in, in this program. So there's some important questions that need answers before moving into um, an actual action plan. And the two questions that we like to start with, um, the first one is, what is it like being in relationship with me? And that tends to be a very different question because typically, you know, it's very easy in relationship for us to think about what it's like to be in relationship with our partner and to think of all the different ways that they get on our nerves or the things that they do that um, annoy us. Um, but it's, it's much different to actually take your own inventory and really look at what's it like being in relationship with me, both for better and for worse. Um, what are the good things that I bring to the relationship, but what are also some of the things that I may do that really aren't that helpful? And then the second question that we, we like to ask is, what do I really like about my partner? And so these two questions, Daniela, really pull for both personal responsibility in the relationship as well as getting in touch with your sense of gratitude for your partner. And we believe that these are really the two cornerstones of healthy relationships. And what's helpful about these is that they also guard against blame and resentment, which are really two of the biggest obstacles for any healthy relationship. 